Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. It's now been a few days since SLS launched, which was way behind schedule, but still a very exciting mission. Not just because the launch was spectacular, but also because this is really the beginning of Artemis. We're actually getting closer to having humans orbiting the moon once again. But with this spectacular launch, I actually had a couple of people ask me a question. If SLS is more powerful than the Saturn V, why is it so much less capable? So the SLS actually has more thrust than the Saturn V, which is what people mean when they say more powerful, but it's actually a smaller and lighter rocket overall. So there's actually a lot of differences between these two rockets, and all of those differences sort of come together to explain why the SLS isn't capable of taking as much mass to orbit as the Saturn V could. But one of these differences really stood out to me. The Saturn V had three proper stages. The SLS has one stage, pretty much. It has boosters, which it drops partway through the mission, but then it's just this giant tank that's taking it all the way right to the edge of orbit, and then this tiny, barely even a second stage, which circularizes, and then does the injection to take it all the way out to the moon. This is not really a second stage in the same way that like a Falcon 9 has a second stage where the booster gets nowhere near orbit and then the stage actually finishes the burn and circularizes. This is just circularizing and then kicking you out to the moon. So to explain why this hurts the performance of SLS, I decided to pull up KSP. And I built an SLS that had two stages, or two proper stages. So right away we turn over a few degrees and this initiates a gravity turn. I've actually talked about this in a couple of videos, but it's just an efficient way of getting into orbit. We then let the rocket follow its own trajectory until the boosters run out and we dump those. And eventually the main core stage uh, also shuts down because it runs out of fuel and we go ahead and light a second stage and jettison the launch escape tower. Now we just fly that second stage until it reaches a height of about 80 kilometers, which is the orbit I decided to target for this mission. It's not really relevant to Earth because the planet in KSP is actually smaller than the real Earth. Uh, but we're just going to the same orbit twice. Once the peak of our trajectory hits that 80 kilometer mark, we decide to cut our engine and coast all the way up. Then we relight the engine and do a burn, which will circularize the orbit. And after we do all that, we have this nice round 80 kilometer-ish circular orbit. And you can see that we have almost no fuel left in our tank. This spacecraft I've put on the end of this is actually a lot heavier than it looks because I've added extra fuel tanks inside of it, which makes it very dense. Uh, and that's just to simulate sending a lot of mass to space. But what we can do is we can revert to the assembly building, which lets me edit the rocket I just built. And I'm just gonna pull off that decoupler, which separates the stages and the engine. Because really, for the first half of the flight, when we're not using that stage, that engine's kind of dead weight. So maybe you're thinking that pulling it off might actually save us in the long run. And it is true that this makes the rocket a lot lighter. If I pull up the two launches right next to each other, you can see that as we get closer to booster separation, we are traveling faster now that we aren't carrying that engine and decoupler in the middle. This also means that we get to our target altitude of 80 kilometers much more quickly. But when it comes to circularization, we run into a bit of an issue. Let's focus on just the single stage SLS at this point. This is what the real SLS is like. You can see we relight our engine and start circularizing, but we actually run out of fuel and you can clearly tell we haven't even reached orbit. We're still gonna fall back to Earth. So we have to launch this spacecraft and use some of its fuel to finish the circularization. So even though this was an identical rocket, none of the differences that you have between the Saturn V and the SLS, just getting rid of that stage hurts your performance. Having multiple stages allows you to dump some of your extra tank mass that you don't need and can even let you use more efficient engines in that upper stage that are designed to operate at higher altitudes. 
Unfortunately, SLS does not have a proper second stage because it's based on the space shuttle. The theory, I believe, was to save money. I don't think anybody could argue that SLS was successful in saving money, but it was using parts from the space shuttle. The four engines and the two boosters are actually flight hardware, which has been used on shuttle missions, which now they are putting onto SLS and uh, expending them because this is no longer reusable. But it's really not built for that because the shuttle was reusable. That's why it has this weird flight plan where it carries one stage all the way to orbit it's because that stage was reusable, it was the orbiter. But for SLS, where we're expending the rocket, it makes a lot less sense, but because they're using the same hardware, they kind of have to go with this less efficient design. But anyway, that is a really quick video for you. I'm Gon Hathi, bye.